Hey folks, uh, my name is Ben, also known as Battle Mode, and this is Remnants of the Precursors. Uh, this is one of my favourite games. It's a 4x space strategy game, and is a, a feature feature complete remake of the original Masters of Orion One by Ray Fowler. I've previously played a series over at, uh, for my pals at Explorminate, uh, doing a, a tutorial series uh, that was. It was just sort of an introduction to the game and I've not finished that series yet actually and I've, I've decided to carry it on because it was it was quite fun. The game itself, it's we're still in beta and we're actually on version 1.7 and the game's coming on a long way because because Ray, uh, he updates it every few days. Whenever a bug comes up he, he fixes it. But uh, there, there's, just be aware there's still maybe a few bugs here and there and some of the features may change before the game is finally released but this game is amazing the original Masters of, Ar Masters of Orion was amazing and this game is just um, an absolute improvement on that on that already great game um, I've, if you want to see specifically what this game does that Masters of Orion 1 didn't uh, or you want to learn how to play the game in you know in sort of exhaustive detail then please go and check my my tutorial video over at Explorminate because of the Explo uh, the tutorial series uh, we're also currently in the process of of scripting some proper tutorial videos for remnants of the precursors um and those those will be they're incoming at some point in the near future but i thought i'd actually i just want to play a game through i want to do a let's play of this because one way i don't have to sort of describe ex what's going on in exhaustive detail although you will find that when I, I i seem to have got into this kind of tutorial mode whenever i do it whenever i stream now or whenever i do a youtube video so um if you like that kind of style then you will probably like my you'll probably like my content at least i hope so um so with that in mind Oh, one more thing I'd like to say before we start. Remnants of the Precursors is entirely free. It's available for download from remnantsoftheprecursors.com and I'll include a link in the in the description below. Please go and download this game and play it. I think that Master of, of Orion 1 and Remnants of the Precursors, they're just one of the best strategy games that's ever made. This is one of the best strategy games that's ever been made, I think. It's, it's just such a tight design. The, everything in it just works uh, so t so closely with every system in the game works so closely with every other system that it's really difficult to extricate any one of those and place them into another game without without causing other problems, right? So it's just I'll talk about it as we go because I like talking about games and I like talking about game design as well. And I'm not a game designer um, really, but I just, I, one of the things that kind of drew me to Explorminate and one of the reasons why I've been working with them is because those guys are just so passionate about 4X and they're so passionate about gaming in general, uh, but particularly strategy games. And we get into some really interesting discussions about about games and we've got a lot of developers including Ray and others from other uh, from other games that come and hang out with us so yeah, we, we really get into, we really like talking about these things and the more I've been thinking about Remnants of the Precursors and Masters of Orion before it, Master of Orion before it, is that it's it's just such a perfect game. It's well, it's not perfect, but it's not bad. <laughs> it's certainly, but I I prefer it to the vast majority of the modern 4x game, uh, space 4x games that are out on the market now. I do, I do like Stars in Shadow a lot. Um, I'm 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 learning to like Interstellar Space Genesis. I think that's also a good, a good sort of iteration of the Master of Orion to um formula i i like gal civ 3 uh I, I there's a lot of space forex games that i do really like but i think this one's just really really tight it's focused master of orion one's a better game than master of orion 2 anyway in my opinion i do i also like master of orion 2 and i understand why many people prefer it it's, it does some things really well but i'm not so familiar with it as i am with master of orion one well i've talked enough so let's get into a new game I'm I'm really excited to actually play this, um, you know, uh, in a well, just on my own channel, and to be able to to be able to just kind of come at it for how I like. So, I'm I'm wondering who I'm going to play. I've not really planned this video at all, guys. So we're just doing this one on the fly. I've played through with the humans. I find the humans a little bit too easy, just because they're big bonuses that they get to diplomacy, um, and that big trade bonus they get just makes. They just sort of powerhouse the rest of the galaxy and it makes the Galactic Council situation quite easy. For anybody who doesn't know, if you if you want to play this game for the first time, 
and you want to you want to have an easier time of it because it is uh, it is quite a hard game especially on the more difficult settings i advise you either play as the clacons because they get a big bonus to production and you know they 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 are they are they can quickly snowball very very well very quickly snowball into a very powerful empire so the clacons are certainly one of the most powerful in the game the other powerful race is the cylon because they get they get a big bonus to uh, to their research and technological advan technological if you're if you're further ahead in technology than your opponents you're you're more likely to win the game it's that simple the you can, a superior research will give you a superior advantage in in every level whether it's your production your planetary growth your ability to tele terraform uh, the how your ground troops and fleets perform everything so the Cylons are also extremely powerful and they're also really tough to fight against when on the higher settings, at least in the original Master of Orion 1, they were they were a bit of a nightmare. They had the, the potential to just to dominate the game. Uh, the other race that's also very strong is the humans for the reasons I've just explained. They, they've got this expert diplomats thing, uh, which basically means that they get huge bonuses to to diplomacy with every race. I say huge. What it means is there's a sliding scale and they they start out relaxed with everybody, I think. I think it's relaxed. So uh, whereas everyone else will start out a neutral or uh, in, in one either relaxed or or one of the negative ends of the scale. So with that in, with that in mind, I'm relatively experienced in this game. I'm not an expert and I'm not going to claim to be an expert at all. But every one of these races plays quite different. Um, the Bullrathi are really great in ground combat. They're they're absolutely monstrous in ground combat. The, the big problem with the Bullrathi is that they have a they have a penalty to their computer techs. They pay they pay more research points for all their computer techs at the start. Um, so they they they're quite they struggle to keep up with the espionage game. And the, uh, they make up for that with the fact that their their construction tech's good. So they they. They can miniaturize technologies quicker, and they they can put more things on their sh ships. So they they can field big ships full of weapons, and they've got ridiculously strong ground fighters. The the they get a straight plus twenty five point bonus to every ground combat roll they make, which is huge. It's it, I mean in, you'll see in the last game that I did on on ex for Explorminate with the tutorial series, and around episode fourteen fifteen, we started getting into the ground combat, and I think I landed. I landed 20 Alkari um, troopers, 20 million Alkari troopers, onto a planet with five Bulrathis. And the Bulrathi killed them, all 20, and I only killed one. So they're that strong. And they, they did have a mild tech advantage as well, actually, but they, they are that strong. So they're really, really good. The Daleks are hard to play, mainly because they're spying. They're, their main bonus is spying. So it means you really have to, if you want to play to their strength you have to spy the problem is with spying is that eventually you will get caught even with the, their superior computer technology they get so uh, it's quite hard to keep people as your friends as the dalek not only that but everyone hates them Every, nobody trusts the daleks either so they already start with a bit with a penalty to their uh to their relationships with everybody so they're difficult to play um Mechlar are fun. The Mechlar, basically, they, they're out of all the races that could be said to play tall. And what I mean by that is, if you don't understand, uh, you can play in four X games. There's two sort of styles of play with regards to the way that you you approach your city building and your or your colony building. Wide means you have more planets, um, but less. Uh, you know they're less focused whereas tall means you have less planets or less cities but you, you develop them more now the mechlar are the closest thing that you can have to playing tall i think in this game because they have in enhanced factory controls which means that each one of their population can can control more factories and uh, i can't remember the exact bonus i might just have a quick look at this actually i've got the manual uh, the original master of marine manual here so um just if you just bear with me one moment i might be able to just find this quickly you just find where they talk about the mechlar uh, uh, 
Okay, so yeah, the Mechlar can control two additional factories per population above and beyond their normal technological limit. That's huge, by the way. So they can already start out um, controlling four factories per pop. The, the, the issue with them is that they grow, so they grow slower. Uh, well, they, at least they have, they have a, um, a penalty to their ecology spending. So it's, terraforming and growing pops takes a lot longer. But they can get really, really quite powerful. Their other bonus, of course, is that they get a bonus to computer tech. So they're they're really hard to steal technology from because technology uh, the le uh, the overall level or tier of your of your computer tech determines bonuses to spying. So they're really they're quite powerful with regards to being able to steal techs off other people. They're not quite as good as the Daleks there, but they're they're certainly better able to defend against that kind of thing. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these. I, I went through those in the in, through all of them in the in the last game. Um, I haven't played with the Sakura before. Uh, well, I have, but not not certainly not on stream or in a video. The Mershon are fun, but they're very focused on warfare. And I already played with the Alkari recently, and they're also focused on warfare. So, I think I might play with the Meklar. Yeah, I think I'll go with the Meklar. Um, and we can see if we can do a little bit of that tall play. Let's pick a colour that might be uh, Meklarish. Yeah, I like that. I like that sort of cyan colour. And I'm going to call myself Battle Mode. And we'll keep Meklon as the as the home world. We'll, we'll, we'll leave that to the default. So now for the size for the size of the galaxy. The sizes were shifted somewhat from Master of Orion, and, and Ray's really, he's put in some huge galaxies. Look, I mean, you can, huge number of galaxies. You can have like <laughs> literally tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Um, that would be stupid, and I'd still be playing this by the time I'm 78. So I think what I'm going to do, I usually play in 100. Now, 100 is going to be quite a long game. I'm actually keen to play a larger game. I don't think anyone's really... I've not seen any Let's Plays of, of Remnants of the Precursors. In fact, I don't think there's many people doing them, but I've certainly not seen anyone do a large, large galaxy like this. That will be a long game. So I'd be committing to a really, <laughs> a really long game, I think. Um, however, the one thing that used to stop people, I think, play, really enjoying big games in Master of Orion, one was that it, was it, was, it wasn't it was it was balanced for, for the largest galaxy, I don't think. Um, other people who are a bit more veteran with that game might be able to might disagree with me there but remnants of the precursors is designed so that it, it makes the colony manage uh, the management of large empires much more fun um with the fleet screen and the you know the uh the systems screen for the exp uh, explore exploit uh, expand exterminate all that kind of stuff right so we will I will show you that a little bit later on and just kind of show you why. I think I might go for 150. This is going to be quite ambitious. Now we can have 17 opponents maximum in a galaxy of this size, which might be a lot. That's 18, that's 18 empires. <laughs> and obviously when you've got 18 empires, you're going to start doubling up with, um, with the, with, with the neighbors that you've got, because there's only, there's only 10 unique races in this game. Now, um, 100 stars is, is kind of balanced for 10. 150, you probably want some more in there. Yeah, let's go for, let's go for 15. So that's 16, that's 16 players altogether. Then we are going to get a few duplicates in there, which is fine. Um, I don't mind that at all. <clears throat> and then we just got to change the, ch check the shape. So there's the star field, circular. There's a ring. Ring might be fun. I mean, we'd, we, the reason the reason why that might be fun is we'd have to then kind of go through our opponents in order to kind of meet everybody. So it might be a little bit easier in some respects because we'd only have to deal with a few races at a time. But it might make a very long game. Uh, I like the ellipse because the ellipse is very much like the star field, but it just feels a little bit more organic. Um, you can see how it kind of relative the relative distribution of the stars. Um, in the way that it kind of generates them. There's also this spiral. The spiral would be difficult, I think, if you got stuck out on one of the on one of these spurs. Although it might be that Ray's kind of programmed it so that doesn't really happen so much. But 
Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna play on the ellipse. Let's let's try the ellipse with 150 stars. So there's a lot of stars in this game. Um, I, I'm gonna I'll do my best to finish this. I, I just think it'd be interesting just to see what it would be like to to play a game with these with this massive with this large amount of stars. I've never done I've never done it before. I'm gonna put the game up to. I've yet to play on hardest. Um, I can I can win on normal and hard quite easily. So I mean I th I think I'll try harder. I, I usually play on harder now, and it gives me a good it gives me a good game. A, uh, Ray is still working on the AI. He said that in at least when he was speaking to me recently a couple of weeks ago that in his opinion the, the the weakest side of the game probably at the moment is the AI. It's the thing that he's not really he's the AI is is competent and functional, but it's um, he said that it needs tweaking just to and balancing, and that's going to take some time. But uh, I think it it works well as it is at the moment. I think if we put it on harder. I think that will give me a good game. Harder on 150 with 50 with 15 opponents could be fun. So let's uh, let's start. Okay, the Mechlar Dominion. The year is 1081 PA. The Mechlar's search for immortality proves thus far to be a fruitless endeavor. Exhausting every possible means and avenue of research, the frustrated overseers of the corporate turn to you, the supreme arbiter in the hopes that you will be able to provide insight into the paths that remain available to them. During your commune with the wise and ancient entity known as the Mainframe, you learn that the people must turn their search to the worlds belong Mechlon if they, are truly to, if they truly hope to find the answers they seek. You return to the leaders of the corporate with this clear directive, and they in turn with a renewed vigour begin their efforts to perfect the means to reach and inhabit the numerous planets that litter the galaxy. With the first worlds ready with the first ships ready to leave orbit and begin their search of near, nearby worlds, the conviction of the Mechlar to achieve their collective dream has never been more decisive. Your people are determined to gain immortality no matter the cost, and woe betide those who dare to oppose them. And I'm going to begin. I'm just going to take a glass of a drink of water before I start. One of the problems with being a massive chatterbox is you get a sore throat after a while. <laughs> okay. So uh, the fleet is prepared for exploration and colonization, awaiting directive to commence operations. <clears throat> Let's have a look where we started. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, this is going to be a big game. This is going to be a big game, guys. So we're starting in the top sort of left corner. This is going to be great. This is a this is a good position for us to start. It means that we're our backs against the wall to some extent, but um, we we're. We've got less places, well, less directions that the enemy are likely to come from at the start. Now, with 15 opponents, one, two, three, four, five. I mean, they're, they're going to be every few light years, every sort of eight, seven or eight light years. We are likely to have somebody, maybe two or three, probably three races very, very close to us. Um, now, it's no longer the case that they always start on the yellow, uh, the yellow stars. They, they uh, race changed it so they can start on the different stars now, uh, you know, on the different colours. So we may uh, we we may have a surprise with regards to who we bump into at the start. Let's just have a quick look to see what we've got. If we go to the system screen, this gives you uh, the explore tab. Kind of gives you a, it tells you where you can where you where you can reach within your range at the start. Um, these are all systems that we can scout. Okay, so, hmm, the yellow and orange are always a good bet. Um, I like to I like to try and get as many scouts out as possible, um, depending on how many we've got. So we've got two, four, six, seven, eight, nine within our border. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we've got nine within our borders. So three three scouts should do that. Um, We've got two at the start. Let's just see how we get on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send my colony ship down to. Mind you, I've uh, I have I have done this before and made a mistake. So actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it. I'll 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 scout this the uh, I'll scout this first. I'd actually like to I'd actually like not to make any mistakes at the start of the game with a game this big. Uh, an early start is going to be useful. We don't want to do that. Oh, I see the problem. I, I sent two scouts to one place. 
So one scout there. I'm going to send one scout to the Red Star. I'm going to build... I'm going to build one more... No, I'm not going to build any more scouts. I'll leave it at that. Normally, I would scout with the with the colony ship, but I'm going to be a little bit more extra cautious. Now, some people will frown at this. It's a significant... It is a significant um, penalty to the way you start. You know, your your hope... If we were to find a decent star here... Uh, yeah, I'm kind of tempted to risk it, actually. I think I will. I think I will. I'm going to, I'm going to assume that there's going to be a decent planet here. In which case, let's just... un undeploy let's send the scout this direction instead and we'll send the colony ship there yeah I'm, I'm gonna risk it i'm gonna risk it let's play dangerous guys roll the dice so there's nothing else we can do really at the start we just want first of all we want to be growing our industry and uh, i'm just gonna roll a few turns on uh yeah we still need to be building our industry up okay so We've got a Terran size 95 and it's fertile. We were lucky that we sent our uh, colony ship that direction. And uh, we've got a poor planet on our other side. It's uh, size 55. And we've got ancient ruins at Libra. Wow, this is a good start. The Mechlar's main problem is that they don't, uh, they've got prom problems with planetology, right? So their um, they're racial, t here's how the racial tech tree works with the Mechlar. It's gonna, I'll drag this over so you can have a quick look. So the Mechlar are excellent at computers and they've got poor with planetology. So uh, poor means they, they pay 125% of the, of the standard base cost um, for, for all of those techs, but with computers, they only pay 60%. So we've got the possibility to really powerhouse in computers and that's what we're gonna do. We've also just discovered robotic, we've, we've on these ruins at 39 Libra, we've got improved robotics controls. Now, this is one of the best starts I've ever had in a game of Remnants Precursors. <laughs> We've already we can already control four factories each, so now we can control five. Um, our dream of playing a tall empire is coming to is coming to fruition. So yes, let's inhabit this fertile planet. This means we can grow our pops quick, guys. This is amazing. What a fantastic start that we've just had. So there's our little. Uh, Little guy on his Segway or whatever it is, um, plunks his flag down and 21 crater. No, that sucks. I don't like that name at all. Uh, let's call it, let's call it Zoltar. <laughs> whatever that means. Okay. So the first colony was founded on a nearby world designated Zoltar. It sounds like a computer, doesn't it? It sounds like a computer from the 70s. Like that thing in... Uh, that awful, terrifying scene in Superman, is it Superman 3, where the where the computer sucks the woman in, into, into itself and she all gets wrapped around in cables. That terrified me as a kid. <laughs> okay, let's carry on. We're just reminiscing about old, old films. Uh, so this planet here is an arid uh, artifact planet size 60. We need to get this colonized ASAP. Um, in fact, let's start scouting Let's start scouting some of these planets. Yeah, that's just a scout. Um, I'm going to start scouting some more of these planets that are around us. But I would, I would really like to get 39 Libra colonized as soon as possible. Uh, that, that's really important. That is going to be a valuable planet for us because it not only, not, I mean, now we can grow pops really quickly here, um, but we can also, uh, we, we can immediately start getting our research up really fast too. I mean, this is just such a fantastic start. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to start sending some transports over to Zoltar. So, uh, what we've got 57 at Mechlar. Let's just send seven off. Okay. Uh, obviously, when you when the reason why you have to readjust your eco slider there is because it costs some um, some of your billion credits in order to send the transports. Okay. Uh, once we've got a few more factories, I'm going to build another scout. Okay, and um, we've got a resource poor, poor, poor planet here, but it's something we can colonize, so that's okay. It's a step planet. Let's send some more transports from um, from Mechlar down to Zoltar. So, some transports. Uh, we want we want eight. Let's send eight, and we we, we try and keep Mechlar at the fifty percent growth point. Um, as people ask me why it is that I don't use the governor mod. And there's a couple of reasons for this. One, 
Ray is updating the game every couple of days and I will be providing there's no game break breaking saves so, uh, so providing the updates don't break the saves I'm going to be using the latest version each time and I don't want to have to wait for the modders to to fix it the other thing is that I just like I don't mind micromanagement in this game it's not a big problem even on a big galaxy like this remnants of the precursors makes it easy um, so Whilst I, I kind of I respect what the, those guys are doing with that mod, and I, you know I know a lot of people swear by it. I just I'm not bothered. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, so let's. Uh, I wonder if we can start. I'm going to put a little bit into building the scout now. It's usually I don't like to mess around too much with with build, uh, with putting money into stuff that's not industry right at the start. Look at this. We we can. Uh, we can control a maximum of 500 uh, factories on this planet. This is at the start of the game. So anybody who's, I mean, anybody who's watching this who's familiar with the game or with Master of Orion 1 will realise what an amazing start this is. Um, I'm, I need a, a good start on this because harder will the the uh, AI will get a big bonus to everything that's going on. Um, you know, he will the, the AI will get big big bonuses regards to production. But this is, I mean, this is almost like production easy mode let's say so i want to get more of these uh, colonists over okay we've got a we've got an irradiated planet there at 53 pegasus i want to get more uh, more more of these pops out to zoltar i think i'm going to try and like the quicker we can get zoltar to 50 percent um, population the better so we can really start powerhousing its its um uh popul population growth and the moment we we can do that then i'm going to start building a colony ship Oh, we got another scout by the way so uh, we're going to build another colony ship and then we're going to get 39 libra uh, i'm going to send these scouts out this i'm going to send this one that that direction i'm going to send this one over here what's this oh this is a yeah the mechlo fleet why is it coming from that direction oh that's right i forgot i uh i went that direction first <clears throat> just confused myself for a moment there Okay, so we don't want any more scouts. I, what I might do is, though, I might build a couple more fighters. Um, normally, I would not do anything ridiculous like this be, uh, before. However, no, I'm not going to do it. It's going to it's significantly going to affect my growth. Um, I like to get over a good planet like this. It's good to get a fighter or two, just so that um, it, any colony, any AI colony ships will be forced to uh, retreat. However. I think it's at this early stage of the planet's development, it's just going to be a big problem. I was very, very lucky sending my colony ship here to Zoltar. I'm so glad that I did that. That that really that really kickstarted. Um, it's really kickstarted our economy. Having fertile growth on here for the Mechlar is amazing. And then uh, an artifact planet. I mean, really, we're particularly with this. Uh, we we found industrial robotic controls or uh, improved improved factory control. That, that's just Wow, fantastic stuff. Okay, uh, Mechla. I'm going to wait one more turn before sending some more. You do actually pay uh, money for each transport, as I said. Oh, we have some bad neighbours. We are the merchant, Mechla, and we adhere to one belief alone. The strong shall take and the weak shall give. If you do not already understand the wisdom of such a philosophy, we'll be sure to teach it to you very soon. I think this means that they're, they're not they're not a very nice personality type um okay so where did we bump into the merchant all oh, right they're at zoltar already now that means that they are probably they're somewhere around here how let's just see how far they are away from okay so they're 7.4 light years from zoltar i don't think they could have made that unless they've got uh, some technology already they might be here they might be there. Um, yeah, well, they could be here. Yeah, that's possible. We we need to consider the possibility now that we've got an aggressive neighbour very close. Let's just see how close they are. Yeah, they are close enough for us to be in diplomatic treaty range, and they're a ruthless militarist, which is their their standard personality type. So. Ruthless militarists are difficult to deal with. Let's see if we can get a trade agreement, but I don't think they're going to do it. Okay, they've agreed to a trade pact. Um, if they are here, 
That means that I really need to get this planet colonized as soon as possible. Like yesterday. <laughs> um, we've got 68 factories on Mechlon. Let's just send some more pops. Let's send some more transports down to Zoltar. Now we do lose a, we do lose a small amount of production each time we do that um, because the population also not they don't just control the factories but they also uh, they give you 0.5 pop, um, production per pop as well. So we do we are losing a little bit, but it's it's worth it in the long run. It's the factories that they control that's important. We could technically drop this population down to like 20 if we wanted to and you know get these get this planet up really fast and we'd still be efficiently using these factories just because of the crazy amount of factories that we can control with each one of these but um let's try and get that planet up and running uh, pronto and uh, bear with me a minute uh yeah let's try and get that one running pronto and then we can start b b uh, blitzing out this this planet here i really want this planet um, we can use this as a sort of galactic mainframe in order to kickstart our our uh, technology research. We don't need any technology research at the moment, although the Mercians are, I guarantee, they will prove to be unpleasant neighbours with that ruthless characteristic. They're just going to go for us. And that's what they do best, right? I mean, they're meant to be a kind of pirate race. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, let's just go to next turn. I don't think there's much more we can do here. We've got 27 pops on um, on Mech on uh, Zoltar now. We want to get a f we want more in there though. Okay, we're getting almost towards the 50% point. I think we could probably send. Let's send a few more. Let's just send four. Oops. And then. Yeah, I'm just I'm I've I'm anxious to get this planet as soon as possible. If the Mercians see it, they will colonize it and that will be that will have to I will have to go into an early war with them then and then all that advantage that I've got from this fantastic start will be will be lost. Okay. There's the Mercians. They've got that planet. They 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 are probably now within No, they're not within colonization range. Um they're not within colonization range, I don't think. However, that's still, I mean, let's just have a look what they've got around them. Uh, so for those who don't know, this expand tab is something new in Remnants of the Precursors, and it, it shows you which planets that you can, uh, in green, it shows you which planets you can colonize with the current technology and the fleet range that you've got. Um, it's such a great, it's such a great little innovation, that. So, uh, yeah, I, I think if nothing else, maybe some, oh, I don't know, maybe it's a bit better to just build the colony ship. Mind you, it's 12 years still, look, nine years. It's, it's such a tough choice. Um, it's really difficult to decide what to do here. I might drop my factory building down just a touch. And try and get a fighter up there, but it's the thing is, you know, it's a significant drop in your in your production. But I mean, it it would it would guarantee that any any unarmed colony ship they send up there. I think we're all right for the time being. Let's not do that yet. It's I think I'm going to rely on the fact that they're not too close. I don't they don't think they're here or here. Um, we need to move that off the Mercian's planet. They, it will upset them if we if we loiter in their systems. Not that I really care, but um, just for the purposes of the game mechanics, it will it will upset them. Um, we don't want to do that. This planet will grow really really quickly, and what we can do is once we've got once we've once we bust that population up, we can then start sending them back to Mechlar and really get Mechlar on the go fast. Okay, and we've met the Daleks. We greet you, denizens of foreign space. It would be best for you to do what you can to ensure our coexistence is mutually beneficial. Okay, that sounds like they are a different personality type to what they usually have. Ah, uh, they're ruthless diplomat. Why did we get ruthless right next to us both? Okay. Well, so be it. 
I'm going to keep try and keep these videos to a sort of around half an hour, 40 minutes. I, I find half an hour is a little bit too short sometimes, but then I, I don't think people, if they see a playlist with 20, 30 videos and they're all an hour long, I think they're much less likely to want to watch them. So I, um, let me know what you think in the comments about that. What What is your preferred kind of, what is your preferred time um, for watching these kind of Let's Plays? I, a lot of the guys that I like watching, people like Daz Tactic, and they, they tend to, on YouTube, they tend to stick around half an hour, which I think is probably about right, but um, I think I'm going to make this initial episode. I think I, I think I might end it here, actually, at 35 minutes. That sounds about good. That sounds about right. So, thank you. Thank you for watching. I hope you, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and let's hope that this game is going to be fun. I mean, look. It's already fun. It's already fun. Look at the look at the great start we've had. We've got a couple of we've got a couple of ruthless neighbours, which is going to make things kind of hairy, but we are well prepared for them with this great start that we've got. I mean, look at this. We can we can already control five hundred factories just for one hundred population. Um, we might be forced into playing a tall game here, but we are well equipped to do so. So, okay, guys, I'm going to end the recording there. I'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye.